how do you learn a new offense? As a quarterback who played on seven teams in four leagues over 11 years, I'm about to tell you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, 11-year pro and quarterbacks coach here at Elite Athletes TV. Today, I want to talk about how you learn a new offense. Over the course of my career, I had the opportunity to play in four different leagues, the NFL, the Arena League, the Canadian Football League, and the XFL in its first go-around. And I played for seven teams, which means seven new offenses over the course of my career. That's a lot of studying. You can see back here, these are all my playbooks. And so that's a lot of offense to learn, a lot of things to understand, a lot of new terminology. And I want to tell you how I did it today. But first, if you're new to the channel or if you love quarterback play, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell. You know the drill. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to start learning. Leave me any comments down below. If you are trying to learn an offense, tell me where you're struggling. Maybe I can help you out. If you've learned offenses, tell me what works for you. The first thing I will tell you is that this system worked for me. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody learns a little bit differently. Everybody has different coping strategies for learning new systems. What I'm going to talk to you about today is the way that I did it, the way that makes sense to me, the way that made it easier for me to understand, and the way that I was able to process offense. First thing I'll tell you, I showed you the playbooks. These stacks and stacks of notebooks over the course of my career. I love, for some reason, these composition books. Having a great little notebook, all consolidated, all your thoughts right there together are fantastic. A lot of guys take notes in the playbook, and I understand that. I didn't always want to take notes in the playbook because sometimes I tend to doodle when offensive meetings go long, and I didn't want coaches to see any doodling in the notebook. And if I have a pen and paper, it's going to happen. So it's all contained in my notebooks. I keep all my notes in there when we talk about plays. Plus, that gives me one more rep at drawing that play up. When you first get a new offensive playbook, it's overwhelming. My Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook was massive. Every NFL playbook is massive. My college playbooks were massive with a lot of plays, a lot of formations, a lot of sets, a lot of motions, a lot of things to think about, talking about defensive coverages and everything else. And so the human mind like, likes to compartmentalize and categorize things. And so understanding that, I wasn't trying to read War and Peace all in one go. And even in books like that, they break it down into chapters and sub-chapters and subheadings. For me, my best coping skill in terms of learning an offense was to break it down into smaller chunks. You have to organize your thoughts. And if you don't organize your thoughts and you try to take it in all at once, it's just going to be overwhelming. It's like trying to drink water from a fire hose. And it can really it can stifle you because you feel like there's just so much information, you can't process it, and it shuts you down. And so the first thing that I would tell you is when you come into a new offense, when you're trying to learn something new, break it down into small bite-sized pieces. Think about the way that coaches call plays when they come into the huddle. The first thing as a quarterback that you're going to get is a personnel group. You're going to know who's coming onto the field. So first and foremost, learn your personnel groups. It can be 10 personnel, 11 personnel, 12 personnel, 22 personnel, if you call it that way. If I go back to my Cal playing days, we had bombers, which was 20 personnel, two backs, no tight ends. We had flank, which was 11 personnel, one back, one tight end. We had strong right and left, which was just our standard 21 personnel. And so we went through all these personnel groups, muscle group, we had elephant, we had rhino. I mean, there's a bunch of different groups out there. And it was all those personnel groups that you can categorize because you know certain plays, certain sets go with certain per personnel groups. So first and foremost, know your personnel groups. Secondly, then you want to start learning by formation. You know you have a group on the field. You know what personnel group it is. Now start categorizing your thought by formation. So now you have personnel. You know, for instance, I'll talk about my Cal days. We have bombers on the field, which is two backs, no tight end, 20 personnel. So bombers right. We have our receiver is our strength to our right. Backs offset in a pro set. Strong bombers right. Backs offset towards strength, et cetera, et cetera. So learn personnel. Then you learn formations. 
Once you have formations, you can organize your thoughts about where guys are on the field. And you can start to get a mental picture of what that looks like. And that's what we're all gearing towards. I talked to you about what a quarterback should be thinking about pre-snap. I did a video about it. I'll put that video link right up here so that you can get back to it. And you can learn what I'm talking about, how you should be thinking about pre-snap. But you can start to get this mental image of what that looks like in your head. Okay, I know I've got bombers personnel or flank personnel, and now I've got bombers right or flank left, whatever that is. I can see that picture in my head, close my eyes, and I can see that lined up. All right, now I've got that organized. I have it broken down into smaller chunks. Next, you want to go with, and here's where it differentiates on some teams, your motion. Oftentimes, team teams will call motion to the final formation set. And then the other teams will call formation start and then motion from the initial set. And so here's a really important part of learning new offenses. Learn the rules. What are the rules in the way that your offense is called? Do you set formation and then run motion from there? Do you call your motion to run to a set formation? Is it Z cross to strong right, or is it strong left Z cross? Which one is it? What are the naming conventions for your offense? That will tell you what the rules are for your offense. Consistency is absolutely essential when you're learning a new offense. And so having naming conventions that match up and are consistent across the board will help you understand the offense. So look for those keys. Coaches, so many times try to keep their naming convention conventions consistent across the board. And that way, if you call it one way, once you're going to call it that way, every time you call it and knowing that that pattern exists also makes it easier for you to categorize, for you to compartmentalize how you're calling offense. Then we go into concept. So now we have personnel group, we have formation, we have motion. Now concept. Well, run plays are easy. Because you're essentially going to call the back, the hole, and the play, which is the blocking scheme. So it can be 24 power, 25 power. It can be 36, 37 counter. It can be 30 trap. No matter what that is, it's generally speaking going to be back, the back that's getting the ball, one back, two back, three back. It's going to be the hole is the second number, and it's going to be the play design is your blocking scheme for the third. And so run plays are super simple. As a quarterback, all you have to remember is your assignment on that play, and you're good to go. Pass pro and pass plays have two concepts that you have to think about. A, as a quarterback, you have to protect yourself. So the first thing you're going to call is protection. It's going to be strong right in the Cal case when I talked about it if in our bomber set. Bomber's right, blue. Blue is our pass protection. It was an inside zone protection, big on big on the outside. And so your backs would get a inside out one, two read. If you understand pass protection, you know what defenses you can face. Pass pro is always going to work with the personnel group you have in the game. So you see how it's all starting to tie together. Remember personnel, formation, motion, concept, concept, starting with pass pro, your pass pro is going to tie in with your personnel. Now we're going to get into further concept because receivers are involved as well and it's going to be the passing concept are you running flank or drive are you running oaky or out routes are you running four vertical three vertical smash spot what are you running and how does that concept tie in and so as you break it all down into individual pieces you'll see that a lot of these slide together a lot of pass plays five step drop you can run the same pass protection For Oki, you can run the same pass protection for uh, the smash route. You can run the same pass protection for spot or snag. You can run the same pass protection for four verticals. Or you can switch that up and you can go to a seven-step drop on something like flank or drive or Dover. And so those pass protections are going to match those routes for timing sakes. And they're all going to tie into what we already talked about. And so when you can break it all down into those smaller pieces and understand each piece individually, then you're starting to get it licked. Finally, what you have to remember on all those plays is assignment. You have it all set in your head. 
right? Let's go through it one more time. You've got personnel. You've got formation. You've got motion. You've got concept. Run plays, easy. Pass pro. As a quarterback, you got to think a little bit. And then passing concept in terms of route style that you have. Then you have to think about your assignment within that concept. Okay, as a quarterback, I know what my pass protection is. Got to make sure that I'm protected first, that I'm not throwing hot. And then are we running a triangle read? Are we running a two-on-one in the middle with vertical routes? Are we running a full flood read? What are we running? What are we trying to leverage? And who is my key? That's the way you need to learn an offense. How did I study it? I know a lot of guys, ton of guys, love to study off of note cards. Kind of like you're taking a test in college. You write everything down, you write on the note card, and you look at it, you try to think about it, and you flip it over, and you look at the answer on that. I didn't like that style for two reasons. One, it reminded me of being in class. But two, I wanted to perform on the spot. And so what I like to do is have a list on the wall or have somebody who has a list of the plays that I'm trying to learn. And I would get on a whiteboard and start drawing out plays. I love getting on the whiteboard as a quarterback, conceptually speaking, because you can work through concepts as you're drawing it up. And I am a physical learner. I like to learn by doing. And so by getting on the whiteboard, drawing up plays, I am learning by doing. You can do the same thing on paper if you don't have access to a whiteboard. You can draw up plays on paper. You can draw them against different coverages. You can draw them against different looks. You can put pressure in. And you can really start to understand and pick apart the play actively thinking, being on the spot, having to draw it up. And so create a little bit of that pressure feel that you're going to feel when you're in the pocket. And then finally, as a pro, about my fifth or sixth year playing, as I matured, started to understand myself, my body, the way I thought a lot better, I started using visualization to not only help me learn plays, because by that point I had personnel, formation, motion, concept, all of that stuff down, but to go through every single read in my head. And I would take a play, I would get the, the, all that information down, get the play in my head, close my eyes, and I would see it just like I have it on the whiteboard. And I would visualize that play. And I would draw it up in my head against a defense, say cover two. I would run it, draw it the way it draws up versus cover two. And then I would see it happening in game, visualize it happening in game versus cover two. And I would do that both from my perspective inside the helmet and as an overview, like I'm watching it from game film versus cover two. And that way, visualizing in that manner helped me understand the totality of the play. I talk about thinking globally all the time. I love quarterbacks to understand the entire concept of a play. You have to start by breaking it down into little chunks. But then when you put all those chunks together and you get a full understanding of how it all works together and how it all looks together like you're watching it on game film, as a quarterback, it makes decision-making super easy easy. So as a pro, I finally learned how to control all of this knowledge and how to control my thinking and my thought process into how to process on the field. And once you mentally rep this and do the visualization enough, you have it and you've seen it so many times that no matter what happens on the field, you've got an answer right now because you've seen it, you've done it. And mental reps are 99.5% as good as physical reps when you're playing that quarterback position. Now you have to stay in shape. You have to be physical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Nervous system has to be ready. But mentally, your brain doesn't know the difference. Whether you're visualizing it or doing it, your brain is processing the information and storing that for recall come game time. That's how I eventually evolved into processing offense. But when you're just starting out, break it into small chunks, right? Personnel, formation, motion, concept, passing concept. And then go from there. And once you have all that, know your assignment, learn to visualize, and improve the way that you read playing the game. That's my system. It worked fantastic for me. You may have a different system. You may love the note cards. Whatever works for you, though, that's what you have to do. Don't let it be daunting. Don't take huge chunks. Break it off into small pieces. Study your game plan. 
understand what your coaches are trying to accomplish and be the best quarterback you can possibly be. My thoughts for you, trying to give you some quarterback training, improve your football skills, and help you play the game better.